Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you've never been here before. I am totally stoked about today's episode. I can't stop smiling and my face is starting to hurt at this point. Um, but I'm so excited because today I'm going to be sharing with you an artist chat banter session that I had with an artist friend of mine. Her name is Grace Lane Smith and she's this phenomenal, phenomenal oil painter. Be sure to check out the description below because I'm going to link her Instagram and her artist website. She's got a, a blog that I recommend you go check out as well. But we sat down and had this awesome conversation about artist opportunities that we find all around ourselves and also our experiences with art fairs. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to subscribe to this channel if you think you'll get any sort of valuable information from it in the future. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this chat. Okay, yeah. so let's start off by introducing both of ourselves because I feel like that's a good idea. People are going to come from your blog and know who you are and not know me and then from the YouTube channel and not know you. So yeah. do you want to uh, start? Um, so I am Grace. I met Peyton earlier this year and really hit it off. We're both artists. Um, Peyton, I think you work in oil as well, right? Or you work in acrylic? Uh, mostly oil, yes. Mostly oil, yeah. So I am also mostly an oil painter, but more recently I've been reincorporating mixed media and textile techniques into my work. Um, and I paint, I mostly paint scenes and I'm based in Nova Scotia, Canada. Nice. Mm -hmm. Tell me about you, Peyton, and the work that you create. Well, I'm Peyton, and I have been primarily an oil painter for the last, I don't even know how long it's been. We're pushing on it on a decade. Mm -hmm. um, I also work with watercolors a lot as well. I used to be mostly acrylic, but now it's oils and watercolors. It's funny, just like Grace, just like you, Grace, I have been doing a lot of experimenting with uh, trying to bring mixed media into my artwork just to revive my creativity and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. I mostly paint landscapes, but all of my landscapes have to do with uh, human perspectives and how we perceive our surroundings as well as uh, transformation. So how we take kind of the crummier, messier parts of our lives and we transform our lives into you know, our shiny new better versions of ourselves. And that's all, uh, I do that through creating landscapes and I use the color palettes and all of that to translate the emotions that we feel. But I say that now and everything's about to change, I feel like, cause I'm, like I said, and you said, we've both been doing a lot of experimenting, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. But uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, working with opportunities and getting through the fears of going for those opportunities that we find and that find us. And I feel like also talk about just allowing ourselves to find those opportunities. Because I feel like, I don't know about you, but for a long time, I felt super closed off mm -hmm. to them. Like I didn't recognize that there were these opportunities. I'd really like to hear you dig a little deeper into that. You know, I don't, I don't know what, if you have felt this way, but so Grace and I actually met through an artist course that we did together over this last quarter, over the summer. And before that course, I would have told you I had no opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until, uh, so we met through Jessica Craddock, Craddock's, um, she's, she runs the artist market. She did a consistent income course that we did. And it wasn't until Jessica said to me, no, that's, that's not right. I'm sure we can come up with some opportunities that I really started to sit there and be like, well, I mean, there's this and then there's this and some commissions and well, I have these art fair ideas. And then that live painting gig came up out of nowhere. And she was like, uh huh, see, and I live in Portland. I live right outside. Of, well, I live in Portland, Oregon, which mm -hmm. is an artist hub, mm -hmm. you know, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And she was like, there's plenty of opportunities, but I was so in my own head. And so, you know, I was being a studio hermit <laughs> that I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow myself to see them. Have you I, ever think, 
I think you're really right about that. Um, so my living situation is the polar opposite of yours. You live in Portland, which is an artist hub. I live in a town that has 5,000 people. Now we double when the students are in because it is a university town, but it's pretty, I'm, I'm surrounded by rural areas. I live in town, but it's pretty rural and I'm about two and a half hours either direction to the nearest city. So I have sort of felt similarly to you. Um, so just to give an example to everybody about just like the size of my town too, I have to order all my supplies online. There is no proper art store within easy driving distance. Yeah. So that's how small my town is. But we do have some paper copies, so that's kind of exciting. I think similarly to you, I hadn't really seen those opportunities. Um, before starting the program, uh, I was only operating from collection release models. So I would, what that means for anyone who is unfamiliar with that um, approach is you paint a series, a body of work, and then it all kind of makes sense together. It's cohesive. And then you put it in, for me, in my, in, in my approach, I would put it online into my online shop and tell the world about it. That would be my collection. So um, it was, it, it it's a great way to reach uh, an audience outside of your own geographic location, which is fine. But I didn't realize that it was one, just one method of doing things. Um, I had known about, you know, like the traditional stuff. I know you can sell through galleries. I had known you can sell online, which was how I got my start. But I hadn't realized until working with Jessica, and the key word is similar to what you said, Peyton, opportunities. I hadn't known that there are actually so many more ways to get your art out there, to be seen, um, to reach new people who would resonate with your work. Uh, so my key takeaway from working in that program was the phrase opportunities are all around you. And I think, and Peter, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that phrase opportunities are all around you is part of a list of choices that we can choose to take action on every yeah, week. I think yeah, I think that was one of those actionable things that we can do to try to see opportunities around us. And when that happened, uh, when I guess like when the light bulb moment came on for me, I started seeing opportunities everywhere. everywhere. Right? So you had that moment too. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. like, just like in the moments where people are like, oh, hey, like, what do you do? I'm like, here's an opportunity. You know, right. you don't know if it's going to be a great one, mm -hmm. but the power of word of mouth and like also just seeing the opportunity to speak about what you do could lead to a more profitable opportunity that you don't yeah. even know exists, you know? And the part here too, another topic that we can maybe dive into later is talking about what we do in the moment when people ask, so what do you do? Um, I find like in my experience, I think from talking with you too, Peter, in your experience, we just need a practice to talk about what we do and realize, yeah, people are interested in hearing about that. Um, so even if it's not, uh, in say an art setting per se, it's just an everyday opportunity. It is an opportunity for us to practice talking about what we do. And I think like having those opportunities to actually practice seeing it, it builds up those muscles to help us, um, be able to talk about what we do, which I find for a lot of artists is kind of difficult. It's like one of the hardest parts. Yeah. Well, and also so I feel like. I feel like that in itself, just going into a, an opportunity or a conversation and saying, my goal here is to just practice talking about what I do instead mm -hmm. of my goal here is to let people know that I'm selling artwork so that maybe mm -hmm. I can make a living off of this. I'm trying to make sales, money, sales, sales. It's such a weird thing for me. It's it, a lot of pressure. It, yes. It, it's so for much you and for the other person. Yeah. And you just, the uncomfortable, like the uncomfortability, the feeling of being so like, uh, going into that with that being the mindset, it makes it so much harder and so much weirder than going in and just being like, yeah. I'm just going to practice having a conversation about what I do. Which, yeah. In turn, I think we both realized that's what really brings you to the sales. You know, I mean. And also, I want to build good relationships with people. Mm -hmm. I want to build authentic connections with people. Because that's who you are as a yeah. person. Yeah, and that's the same with you. And it, I feel like 
we want to do that while trying to make the money. Yeah. But when you just focus on the money part, you almost feel so awkward and so uncomfortable that you don't make that authentic connection no. and you just bypass it. And it's not that great of a conversation anyways. But if you don't talk about what you do and your work and let people know it's for sale too, then you're also not doing your business or the person who's seeking the artwork, they lose an opportunity as well. You're not doing anyone a favor. So yeah. there is this balance. This balance, right. And I think, you know, we, over this past summer, we've both been practicing that and getting more comfortable doing that. And definitely it's still a learning curve for me, you know. Yeah, for me too. But practice doing a lot of those things. So we've kind of talked about the discussion piece a little bit. Um, would, you, would you like to chat a little bit about uh, some of the opportunities that came up for you and yeah. how you started spotting those opportunities maybe and then following them? Well, so actually most of the opportunities that I found came from me relaxing on the whole salesy side of things and actually just the practice of talking about what I do for a living. And that's the key though. Yeah. It's, this is what I do for a living. So I think that's where the the balance that you were just talking about comes in because you're telling people this is your job. Yeah. You know? So like over the summer in August, I had that art fair. Yes. And I went into the head with just the, the mindset of, I just want to practice talking about my artwork and also practice trying to get people on an email list. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I, mm -hmm. I went into it telling myself I could care less. Well, that's not true. I'm not going into it desperate for sales. Yes. I'm not going to go in and please buy my artwork, buy my artwork, buy my, yeah. my artwork. And actually I came out of that situation learning about, I think I found out about four or five art opportunities. Oh, that's cool. You know, and it was uh, purely from talking about my artwork with yes, the, the potential customers and clients and collectors, mm -hmm. but also other art people in the community were there. Yeah. So there were, there were, you know, there was the art council commissioner. He was there. He came in and talked to me. I, I started this conversation with this gentleman and I had no idea he was the director of the artist council there. That's cool. And he ended up, once I found out, I was that, that's really awesome. I love that I'm having this conversation, but he was also able to like point me in the right direction yeah. towards a bunch, a bunch of other opportunities. And there were actually also uh directors for other artist council uh councils in the area different towns and stuff and also other galleries and things like that little shows galleries mm -hmm. fairs that were there trying to snatch up artists for their future shows that's really cool and so i'm like yeah. wow this is awesome all these opportunities and i think that that really came from just relaxing and talking about the art yes rather than the sales but then yeah also just learning how to communicate with regular everyday Joes about mm -hmm. what I do through Instagram and in, in person, it's led to commissions and possible commissions. Oh, I didn't know you got a commission from yeah, that. I did. Yeah. Yay. This stoked. is barely sent because I think yeah. we talked a little bit about it, but I didn't realize you got a commission from that. So yeah. So <laughs> thank you. I'm working on it right now. It's, but yeah, it's, it's just a buildup. It's mm -hmm. yeah. What about you? I feel like, cause I feel like over the course of that course that we did, I had to break so many habits that I had to say, I had to pretty much say, I'm not going for sales right now. I'm just trying yeah. to relearn how to run my business. Yeah. So I had no sales over the summer yeah. pretty much, which was mm -hmm. pretty stressful. Yeah. It can be really stressful, but the opportunities were building up. So like, what, did, okay. what did you find? Uh, I, I think because you talked about art fairs, I will also talk about art fairs just so there's a continuation there. So if people can kind of see our different opportunity, our different experiences mm -hmm. with art fairs. Um, so I did four of this. Did I do four? Three. Three? It's a lot though, either way. I think I did three local ones this summer. And um, I had only done this local art fair once before because most summers I was either traveling or, um, or we had COVID and it just didn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. So I signed up to do it and they're all local, um, just like little art fairs, you know, not, you know, there are ba those bigger art fairs, like the other art fair um, 
or uh, you, you know those bigger ones, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, this one was super duper local, which which is fine. Like I signed up so I could talk more with my own local community. And the first one that I went to, um, it was actually both the, the first and the second one I went to because there we had weather warnings. So like the first one was was a rain warning, the second one was a heat warning. They had moved it indoors to the local university. And um, so the vibe was very different from the last one that I went to, which was outdoors at the location that it was supposed to be at. Yeah. Um, the first two, it was, there just wasn't a lot of traffic compared to the third one when I was outdoors. Yeah. Um, the first one I went in and I invited a lot of people to come. So I invited a lot of people, like not just through a newsletter, but through DMs or I texted them or I sent them an email. These were people in my com local community and a few that were not in my local community that lived in the city or further away. But I was just like, hey, um, if you are passing through my town, I am doing this thing and come stop by, I'd love to see you. Uh, and most people responded, uh, which was, I guess a little bit of a surprise for me. I hadn't really expected people to respond, but most people responded. And some people who said that they would come, they couldn't make it and they didn't come. Some people who didn't respond did come, and some people who said they would come came. And so I realized, I learned from that, that inviting people that I know already, and um, I actually set a bit of a goal, 15 to 20 people to invite. So I had a hard time reaching that goal. I think I ended up inviting 17 because I was like, I don't know that many people who would be interested locally. You know, locally, I didn't know that many people would be interested locally. Uh, so I invited people who I didn't know super well either. Um, but what I learned doing that was I enjoy events more when I have friends that I invite to come, even if they're not really like super artsy or whatever. So I had a couple of friends come who they, they're just, they're, they're not, it's just not their scene, but they came to be supportive. And it was such a highlight for me because I felt better. Yeah. I felt like when you're doing an event, I think sometimes it can be a little bit, like you get in your, I don't know about you, but I get in my head and I stress out over it. I tend to get in my head up for a lot of things and I stress out over it. But knowing that she was coming with her boyfriend made me feel better when they came. It just made me feel really good. Like I can do yeah. this. Um, I totally and, get that, yeah. Right? And so this fall, actually this September, I have an event coming up in a couple of weeks. And again, I'm in my head about it. I'm stressing out about it, but I think I will ask a few friends to come again too, because it would just make me feel better. And I learned that it's more fun when I invite some friends. You don't, you don't feel so alone either. You don't There's feel so alone. so alien. Like you just feel like this alien creature with all of your hard work. <laughs> <laughs> when you're standing, at least I do, when I'm standing there by myself, like, look at all my paintings. Oh, right. I like them. It's like, it's like that nightmare where you're standing there naked in front of like a room full of people. At it's least for me. Thing. It's very personal. So right? they have like your tribe with you. Yeah. You just feel... Well, and I don't, so I had, the fact that my, my parents came also, cause I also tried to invite 15 to 20 people to my art fair as well. And okay, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to get that many people, but the fact that I had, especially Trevor, mm -hmm. the fact that he was there, I told you about the, the lack of payment processing yeah. guys. Card processing was absolutely impossible at this point. Right, because they fair. didn't have Wi-Fi at your location there for was, yeah. your, your card processor to read. So all the artists were like, what the heck? What do you mean? Like, we can't take card processing. And it was only original artwork, which is high dollar. Nobody carries that much cash, usually. No. Yeah, but it's not a card. The stress of that, I, I almost down-spiraled into this, like, what's going to happen? But again, sure. we're... Sales was not my goal. It was the email yeah. list and the talking. Had Trevor not been there to be like, mm -hmm. breathe, like it's going to be okay. And like he whipped out his phone and he had enough cell service. Oh, okay. That, so he would be able to be your backup plan. Yeah. We yeah. think like it would have like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It was very hit and miss. I think that's the thing about art fairs, right? Like there's, if you Google, because I did this, I Googled how to prepare for an art fair. Um, there's a lot of information about how to prepare for, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, a higher end art fair. 
but then for the types of fairs we were going to where there wasn't cell service, um, you know, like it, it, there's less information on how you can show up as a professional. And the thing is, you just have to show up as a professional anyway. Yeah. Um, but like you, I went in less with the intention to sell my work and more with the intention to have conversations and build my mailing list, yeah. which I think those are good goals for what we were doing mm-hmm. at the time. Um, you want to build your bonus, reach. What's that? You want to build your reach. Like you want to build your reach. Yeah. The bonus for me was I did end up selling a couple of pieces of work at the first and the second fair, and I wasn't expecting to. So yeah. those were bonuses for me. So I think like those were happy bonuses. Um, but I wasn't expecting to. In the first one I went into, I had these little, I had these little bookmarks for people to take away because I. I didn't like my old business cards and I had run out of my second round of business cards that I did like. So That's I just had these little ideas. Everyone said they were a great idea. So people took those away. And then by the end of the second fair, I ran out of those as well. And the third one, I didn't have enough time to make new ones. So the I had brought a list with join my newsletter and a little note about my newsletter. In the first one, people signed up. The second one, people did not sign up, but they talked to me about it. And so I was like, the third one, okay, I have to ask and tell people about it if I want people to, if I don't want to lose that connection. Right. So yeah. at the third one, when someone showed interest, I did tell them, I have a studio newsletter. Would you be interested in receiving it? And most people that I t- asked, actually everyone I asked had said yes. So they would sign up, but I didn't just ask anybody. Like it depended on how the flow of the conversation went. Yeah. I didn't just say, hey, you, you just arrived to my booth. Like, let's sign you up. Because, Welcome. You haven't looked Welcome. at anything. Give me your email, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I want the person to want to be on there too because they don't want to force something on them. Peer pressure. So, <laughs> the pressure. But this is an interesting thing to talk about because last year, I got a lot of newsletter signups by using the Instagram sticker. You know, like, fill in the question sticker in Instagram stories. Oh, so I used it that way. So I was just like, if you want to join, drop your email here. And that worked really well for me. But this year, it didn't work well for me. I got maybe one person. Is it and weird how it like changes? Isn't it weird? Yeah, I feel like these things, it's it's almost like a trend, right? Like it yeah. runs its course and then you have to pivot. And it was only over the course of one year. It's not like a Not even a full year. Yeah. For maybe nine months. Um, But... I got so many signups from people who were genuinely interested by going into my art fairs with that intention and making an invitation. Like I didn't force people. I was, you know, this is what I do. If you, if they already showed interest. If you want more, you can sign up here. So that's interesting. I don't know. I, like, well, and I feel like I'm still not totally sold on art fairs, but I have to remind myself that. So the art fair that I did this year, A, it was the only one I did this year because, to be honest, in the past, I've kind of written off art fairs. Yeah, I I ever had this conversation. I've always just been like, I want to go after galleries and shops and places like that. Which you can still do. I actually have a video here on, well, on YouTube, Mm -hmm. um, where I, I even say I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go after them that much. Yeah. I'm going to, this is my plan. I'm going to go hard online and I'm just not going to worry too much about art fairs mm-hmm. this art fair was so hit and miss there weren't that first of all it was the first year that this art fair had ever been it was its first year and yeah. then so i don't think they had the marketing down very well so there weren't that yeah. many people coming through other than art people which yeah. actually is a pro art people were there you know and you did mention there were gallerists coming yeah through. and Artists. so i made a lot of art connections but I didn't meet a lot of art collectors, you know? Yeah. So, but it was nice because I did get to meet other artists in the community. I got to meet other art directors and people with their hands in the art community. Yeah. I, I'm still not totally sold on, you I and I talked about on the art fair. Too, yeah. And, and you and I talked through. about how it costs money to it does so, cost money. So you had some where the, the fees weren't that, insane yes. and like so they, for the I did, they were not crazy but you, i also had 
they provided the furniture for it. When we were outdoors, they, they set up the tent, they tore down the tent, they set up the table. Whereas for you, you had to bring, you had to buy your own tent. Yeah. So it, it was an investment for you going yeah. into that. Now I will have all that bigger. stuff for the future, but just, I, I didn't realize, <laughs> I think in the future, I'm going to be more mindful about how long the art fair art show has been around. Also, um, crap, we've got 10 minutes left. That's okay. I think for our first uh, year, yeah. we've hit 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize we had so much to dig into art fairs. I know. Fair. I, I know. I think uh, this is mostly about art fairs, which is fine. Which but, is fine. Yeah. So this is a type of art fair, which, you it's know, if there are people looking for information on it, then. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I think I need to be more skeptical about how much preparation the art fair has done for themselves. Like the whole Wi-Fi thing. The that fact, was a big deal for you. The fact that, that all the artists perfect. were like, what do you mean? You're not yeah. prepared for sales. Um, mm -hmm. And also no reproductions were allowed. So no prints, no nothing. Yeah. And the only artists that sold anything were the ones who broke that rule and brought, oh. <laughs> brought prints. Really? <laughs> they, they were the only ones. Oh wow! And when I talked I've, to, I've never heard of that before. Where it was a fine art only. It was it was all high end art. So they wanted to keep it as high end as possible by saying no postcards, no no prints, Which is no fine, nothing. But then you need a way to pay for it, right? And so yeah. the only people that sold anything were the people who had things that cost like twenty dollars or less because people yeah. had that much cash. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I need to take the time to dig into how long this art fair has been around, what other people's past experiences with it. But also I like the idea of doing like what you were saying with like the square foot show. Yes. I think let's save square foot show for another conversation. Yeah. It's a whole other experience. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to share a little bit more about my experience with this yeah. art fair. Because yeah. Maybe helpful to people. So in terms of conversations, one of the people I invited to was uh, the university art director who I'd already had a few conversations with mm -hmm. beforehand. And anyway, she, she came and she said she wasn't sure if she was going to come, but because her friend was in it, she was thinking about it. But then when I invited her, she's like, okay, I'll come. And she said, it was nice to see my work in person for mm -hmm. the first time. And it was just an opportunity to get to know her better and for her to get much, you know, my work better. And we ended up talking about potential studio visit, which she has since come and done a studio visit with me. And it was just like a really good opportunity to just chat. And I think having those conversations is what makes this type of art fair more valuable yeah. because for you and I, we were selling more high, higher end stuff. We weren't just selling, um, postcards. Right. right. So, uh, especially for you, you invest so much money into it in the first place with your tent, your entrance fee, all of that stuff. You yeah. want to walk away with something more than a $12 postcard. Right. So, right? <laughs> yeah. so having these conversations, I feel is a little bit more valuable at my third fair. It was way more fun because it was outdoors. Uh, and when I say outdoors, I mean like way more foot traffic. I don't regret it being indoors for the first two though, because we were having a heat wave. So that's another thing. Um, but one person that I did end up talking to, she mentioned somebody who was involved with uh, the creative community from another county. And so I found that person's email by Googling the heck out of her, <laughs> I contacted her. And she directed me to two other opportunities, one being um, information for a public commission for another county and one being um, just showing work in one of those very small local museums but I've never had to work in a museum before so it was kind of cool to that would be awesome kind of contact somebody else about that yeah. um so we'll see where that goes the point is like for these types of small art fairs like what we did I mean for yours it was supposed to be a bigger art fair than my art fair I don't know what happened there no, um, but they live and learn <laughs> Again, this like view of where initially we just thought, okay, we're looking for our collector, the yeah. collector who would really resonate with our work, but that opportunity wasn't quite there. So mm -hmm. it was looking for those opportunities all around us and seeing how can we make this work yeah. better. And I think like, you know, we both learned something from this. We learned a lot. So, like, this is helpful for other people who have been, who are in a similar situation as us, where we may be too far away from, um, like, the other art fair right right i don't know just training your eye and your like, mind to be like okay so we need to pivot yeah <laughs> i'm pivot. not selling any artwork because there's no collectors here so yeah. pivot all of a sudden you're realizing all these 
art directors and you know art yeah. industry people are here make and connections that way really interested yeah and also I, yeah just learning how to talk about your artwork yeah and also I didn't realize just how difficult it would be to talk about an email list but that was something good to practice as well it was good to practice I I struggled with it too but then you know third one I was like this is gonna be a priority I'm going to I can do this. Just one opportunity by telling them about it. Yeah. <laughs> and just practicing, like, keeping it, like, really, like, relaxed and... Because yeah. I feel like the email list can also go down the way of, like, this is high stakes, like, talking about sales. Right. But it doesn't have but to it, be. Yeah. You can just relax and have, like, a normal conversation and then, as it pops up in your head, very organically bring it up. And Yeah. So, I think there's something so awesome about practicing all of this in a physical setting and seeing those yeah. opportunities. Because you're right so many opportunities popped up that yeah. had we not realized the opportunities are all around us, we wouldn't have even seen. And exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, but well, we've only got a few minutes left before this thing shuts us down. That's right. And, you know, I can go on about how we both got feedback from the local community about our art, which That's we true. wouldn't have gotten. So, but maybe we can talk about that another time because we only have a few minutes you left. Know, and that was such a huge boost too. Yeah. You know, it's such an important because we know we love our artwork and we know we're good, but it's nice to get that kind of feedback. So yeah, that's a great yeah. conversation for another time too. But yeah, thank you for doing this with me. I'm super excited we did this. Yeah, thanks, Peyton. Yeah. Um, looking forward to chatting about our next topic because i know we need to do this more often it's yeah. just nice to have somebody to bounce ideas off with and chat about mm. art and get all art nerdy about things you know yeah okay that was so much fun that was fun and i didn't realize just you're right how much we would go after the art fairs but that seemed to be like a major opportunity yeah, nice I mean, I want to talk also, about it. was exhausting though. I don't know about you, but I was so tired. Yeah, I was so tired too. After like all everything that goes into an art fair, but I'd love to like at some point talk about galleries and yes, the okay. art murals. You know, and now those. that we're talking about it, you're right. Like the banter, it brings up so many ideas. But when you ask me, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, uh, 